and I forget a lot of what I read, a tremendous amount of what I read. So forgetting things is pretty common then, isn't it? We come across a lot of information every day. Our study materials, the books we read, the podcasts we listen to, and the videos we watch, among many others. However, we often find that we forget a significant part of this information. How do we manage information such that we remember it better? How to retain most of the things you learn? In this video, I'm going to talk about the most effective ways or systems that can help you retain and remember the information for insanely longer periods of time. These methods are proven by science and most of the famous people are taking advantage of these proven methods. Remember, all these methods are independent of each other, meaning that every method alone is super efficient, but you can also try to make your own combinations for more concrete results. So the first method is based on revising the learned information, but it's quite different from how we normally do revisions of our study material. The great thing about this method is we already know how to do it, with a little tweak of course. The method is known as spaced repetition method. Spaced repetition is a method based on reviewing the previously learned material over different iterations. With spaced repetition, information is recalled at increasing intervals until it's committed to long-term memory. Here's how it works. You first consume some new information at 8 a.m. The source can be your lecture or anything. Now you revise that information after one hour, then after three hours, next six hours, and finally after 12 hours. If you want, you can go on further. So this way, the memory is reinforced at increasing intervals. After finding out why it works and pro tip for you, we will move on to the next method. Space repetition works because think of your brain as a muscle. Each repetition is a flex of that muscle. By steadily increasing the intervals between reps, you're pushing the muscle with a steadily more challenging load. You're forcing the retention muscle to grow. Try it. It just works. And here is the pro tip. You can combine it with teaching as an ultra powerful way to learn. After learning something new, try to teach it in a natural setting, on calls or in normal discussions at increasing intervals. It cements the insight beautifully. Space repetition is a science-backed retention method. There are plenty of free tools available to put it into practice. I am going to reveal some of these tools and apps later in the video, so stay tuned. Although spaced repetition is a great method, but if you think that it's not for you, then the effort tool can be another great way to boost your memory retention. According to the effort tool, the more effort we put into recording a piece of information, the better the chances of retaining it. A study conducted at Princeton University in 2014 demonstrated this through a series of experiments. Students of a particular class were split into two groups. The first group was made to take down notes in the old school method, using pen and paper. The second group was permitted to use laptops and tablets to take notes according to their convenience. Two observations were made by the researchers. The first one was that the second group took down more notes. The second observation surprised everyone. First group performed twice as well in all the tests, even surprise tests even though they had lesser notes when compared to the second group. This experiment showed that the more effort you make in trying to study something, the more it will stay with you. So as taking notes by hand requires far more effort, so it is more efficient than taking notes on digital devices, because it makes you memorize information for longer time. A pro tip, try to carry a little notebook smaller than your phone. Maybe you're on a walk while listening to a podcast and you learned this important information. So immediately take out the notebook and write it down. This way you will remember it always. So the next method actually requires your brain to do some effort. Let's find out how. When your partner asks you if you even remember what day it is, and you rack your brain trying to remember whether it's an anniversary or birthday, this process of searching your brain to find an answer is called active recall. Active recall is a learning technique that involves trying to retrieve information from your memory without the help of any hints. Active recall triggers the testing effect. The theory that when you retrieve information from the memory, the information holds better in your long-term memory. It is a more effective way to learn than passive reading or listening to information because active recall forces your brain to engage with the material and retrieve it from your memory. So when you revise material for your exam, don't just read the stuff passively. Instead, try to recall that information first. This can help you better understand and remember the information and can also help you to identify areas of the information which were not given enough focus. Pro tip. For those who are studying, active recall can be used in several forms, such as when taking notes, write questions that refer to your notes. When you're revising, your notes will prompt you to actively think and answer those questions rather than passively reading your notes. 
For this purpose, I strongly recommend to use Cornell Notes system. It requires very little preparation, which makes it ideal for note-taking in class. The page is divided into four or sometimes only three different sections. One block at the top of the page for title, two columns, one for questions and the other for the main notes, one block at the bottom of the page for the summary of the notes on the current page. The reason for using Cornell Notes system is when you work on your brain to write the summary of each page, it helps you understand the topic even better. And when you revisit these notes for your exam, it will help you actively recall this information. So basically, you're applying active recall and the effort rule. That's so much efficient, isn't it? Okay, now comes the time to talk about our last but not the least centuries-old technique that is quite effective when it comes to memory retention. It is known as the method of loci. The method of loci is also known as memory castle. People have used this technique for centuries to remember things. And so what you do is imagine a place that you know, like a geographic place or a house. Imagine that you walked through the house. You could place the things you want to remember at different locations in the house. But you have to turn what you're remembering into a footage. And then you could walk through the house and you could lift things up and find what it is that you're trying to remember. This technique is very powerful and is even used by memory athletes. You could also imagine setting things at a specific landmark so on a nature trail or a neighborhood walk by imagining yourself placing things around a room and then collecting those items in the same order. You train your brain to remember things sequentially. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you will incorporate these methods into your daily life and it will help you remember useful stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.